G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, today Nick just went and did a dumb thing again and said that Himawari 8 is pointless. Well, no, it's fantastic. It blows away flat earth every single day, every single time you see an image. And let me tell you why, Nick, almost everything you said about it was wrong. Whatever. Here's an image of part of the earth that we can see on the Himawari website. The Himawari is supposedly a satellite that is in geostationary orbit and sending photographs of the Earth to us every 10 minutes or so. Of critical thinking and analysis, this Earth image that we have supposedly suspended in space which really should be a glorious background of luminaries and stars and all kinds of things. But of course, we do not see anything of the sort. Whatever. Now, people will often uh, excuse this lack of stars because of things like camera exposure but this is 2019 okay when you're talking about stars in the background well that's just silly because well guess what when you want to scan the whole disk of the earth if you scan the whole rectangle that forms the frame if you scan the circle it's 79 percent sorry 21 percent less so you got to, straight away, you've got a 20% speed gain by only scanning the disk that you need. And remember, this is a weather satellite, only interested in weather. It's been paid for by people with weather. They don't want to look at the stars. They want to see the weather. So that is why. And there's a brilliant video here, and I'll cut a few pieces in here from uh, Scott Manley, and he shows exactly how these cameras work. And the scan schedules on the GEOS 8 ones, I think, or GEOS cameras where they're setting them up for America, doing pretty much the same thing. So do a bit of research, open some tabs, Nick. Whatever. Whether there are meteorites or asteroids or what have you, uh, or <laughs> even the moon, perhaps. That would be something that we could uh, also see if uh, this satellite is far enough away uh, from, uh, from the Earth. City lights. We see no city lights. And when you're talking about can't see lights at night, well, when Starman, this is the um, Elon Musk's Tesla was launched, it was at 5,000 kilometres up, so it was a lot, lot closer than the million kilometres that Himawari 8 is way. When it was passing through behind the darkness of South Africa that one night, it was able to see some thunderstorms nicely lighting up in the background. So you can see these things from space if you've got the right camera at the right lighting conditions at the right time pointing in the right direction. Whatever. So better to be left out rather than be caught out. And, and you can apply this way of thinking to all sorts of other things such as the, you know, the photographs of the moon or... or well, Nick, there's plenty of things that just pop up on Himawari that they don't plan for. There's um, dust clouds, there's... Um, um, bushfires, you often see little sm puffers of smoke popping up here and there, little smoke trails. And then there was this beautiful one of the big flood up north where the clouds parted early in the morning and the whole countryside for thousands of acres, areas bigger than the size of Thailand, were covered in water. No one planned for that, didn't know it was going to happen, yet it all showed up nice and perfectly cromulent on Himawari 8. Whatever. Well, Nick, it's not actually an image, it's a scan built up over 10 minutes, but if you've watched the previous video that I linked you to, you will know that now. And, of course, the one thing that you didn't do that everybody else does that wants to prove that Himawari 8 is real and truthful is compare it to something you see real time. Now, Wade's Underworld does this all the time, and I do it all the time, and we make a bit of a running joke of it. Every time we see something from space or a high in the sky, we quick grab a Himawari 8 image to val validate it and verify it. And here, look, I've even got, because I know what you're going to say next, it's built from radar images of weather stuff, which is total rubbish, because what it often picks up is things like crepuscular ray shadows. Have you seen those, Nick? Here's a couple. And these things are very ephemeral. They pop up real quick and they're gone again. But you can see them quite plainly from the ground, and you can actually see them from the Himawari 8. Well, sorry to burst your bubble, mate. 
And then also on my channel the last few months, I even went and looked at the flood waters. There was a huge flood in North Queensland, which flooded all the way down through the Murray-Darling Basin and ended up in Lake Eyre. And I tracked that flood water via the Himawari 8, and you could see it going all the way down through the river systems. So, no weather radar is picking that up, mate. So, um, again, it's, it's what we don't see. That you now, of course, you're asserting that these things could be faked, but you're committing the argument from Antonio Subarats here. You're saying maybe, but you're presenting absolutely no proof. If you're going to say it's being faked, you then have to, you simply must do the next step and prove that it's being faked. Otherwise, you're just waffling. And recreate the, this imagery of uh, very realistic looking clouds. I mean, this has been done on TV since... Uh, I don't know, the 1980s, for example, uh, at least uh, 20 years or so, uh, local news stations have been able to put together weather radar looking at real clouds. You collate all this data from uh, weather balloons, easily process the entire milliseconds, simply recreating these cloud formations in something fairly close to real time is, you know, it's not beyond uh, the technical capabilities of uh, computer imagery these days. Um, so that's another thing to consider. Now, uh, what if this is a real image or a combination of real photographs, how else could that be done apart from having what is commonly referred to as a satellite in uh, geostationary orbit? Well, uh, something uh, we can consider as a possibility are geostationary balloon satellites. Now, you can easily just look this up on Wikipedia, and here it says that geostationary balloon satellites are proposed atmosphere analogues to satellites. Okay, Nick, let me stop you there. Um, of course, Google is already doing this. They're Google loons. You should Google loons. I mean, Google, Google loons. Well, I think you can figure out what, it, well, maybe you can't. Just type in Google and then loons and then balloons, and you'll probably find it. But they've been floating around for a while, even around Australia. There's there. But the thing is, they don't just hover geostationary because they need some way to do it and they usually do it by controlling their altitude and picking the winds in the favourable directions. But they're not quite like a geostationary satellite though, Nick. They won't stay exactly in one spot. So they certainly look primary place. And when you say why would they not build a different technology after they find this first really good technology? Because the new one's better. Which is why is your car better than it was 50 years ago? because it's better. Whatever. Perceive how easy it is to misguide us with such uh, fabricated images that can easily be uh, created with computer imagery and data that's collected from a variety of sources and put together to give us these images, not photographs. So I hope that's the last time that I hear this ridiculous excuse as uh, some kind of way of debunking uh, the flat earth. If Nick, if you think that Globies are not going to mention Himawari and just how well it destroys flat earth ever again in the future, <laughs> mate, no way, not based on what you just said. You copped nothing, you stopped nothing, mate. People were really exploring space and uh, were out there with these satellites. We should be given some glorious views of uh, the night sky. Well, OK, Nick, if you want to see some glorious images from space of the Earth and stars, you only really need to Google search for it. There's heaps of them out there. Oh, Nick, so you want to see a photo of um, images of the Earth from the Moon? Well, you're such in luck. Just the other day when there was an eclipse, there happened to be a few little um, satellites orbiting the Moon, and one of them was pointing back to the Earth, and this is what it grabbed. So enjoy that. Whatever. Uh, imagery to us as some kind of proof that we live on a globe. Uh, anyone who is able to employ some critical thinking should be able to use their own discernment and work it out for themselves 
that uh, we are simply not being told the truth, whatever. And really super finally this time, Nick, if you really want to learn and become educated, lift the ban you have on all those good people who are actually trying to help you learn. Come on, Nick, do it. Whatever. Well, sorry, Nick. Sorry to disappoint you. You are going to hear this a lot. The Himawari 8 rocks at smashing flat earth. It kills it dead, stone dead every single time. Because what you've done here is you come with a whole pile of ideas, but not proved a single one of them. And you only use the word perceive once. So, sorry. No good. Whatever. Okay, let's just finish up. Let's play some bits of Wade's Underworld where he went and found some really brilliant things from space. A lot of them from Himawari 8. Oh, poor Nick. You didn't really do well with this one, did you, mate? Whatever.